What I was attempting to do was ski solo, unassisted and unsupported, from the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole. It's a distance of approximately 1130 kilometers, and I thought it might take about 45 to 60 days. I was really excited to be on expedition in Antarctica doing something I've only read about. The second day I begun and uh, I was not wearing skis because I, I was trying to be more efficient and, and move at a quicker pace. So I went along and uh, that's when things took a dark turn. I took a step and basically I f the next thing I knew I was hanging by my armpits. I fell through and uh, I was jolted to a halt by my backpack. So what I did is I started to wriggle out of my harness, my backpack. I wriggled them free and I fell onto the snow bridge. I could see down the way that it got a little brighter. It, there was still snow everywhere. There wasn't like a jig hole or opening into the sky, but it did seem to go up higher and there was a bit more sunlight coming through the snow. I'm like, I gotta get over there. And I finally get to this high point and as I stand on it, I look over and it, there's this dark black slit in the crevasse and it obviously goes nowhere, a place that I don't wanna go. And uh, so I kind of backed off of that a bit and I'm looking up, I'm like, well, this looks like the high point, I guess. So I took my ski pole and it didn't reach the surface. But what it did do is it scraped just along the bottom of the snow and it fell through. That was luck. But the other plan was to hack out steps and to climb out. And that wasn't a hundred percent guarantee that was going to work. Oh wait, no, it's not my only option. I have a phone in my backpack. <laughs> huh. So I, I go along to the bottom of the crevasse again. I get the Iridium sat phone and crawl and up and over and around and through to my high point again. And I, I just kind of holding it like this. And I couldn't believe that I got five bars right off the bat. And I'm like, that's insane. I call the number and I hear Victoria Patriot Hills. And that was very warming and comforting. Um, to speak to a friendly voice. With the professionalism that I was experiencing on the other end, it was easy for me to remain calm and, and hopeful. I waited for uh, six hours in total, and uh, the phone was fine. <laughs> it didn't die. Um, it got frosty, for sure. I would just brush the frost off, and it evidently had a very strong signal, which was amazing. And uh, this became my lifeline. This was the thing that gave me comfort that maybe something could happen. It also made me realize that if something happened that they couldn't come and get me, maybe I would be able to call my family and say goodbye for the last time. There was the sound of, of a vehicle. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Like, this could not have ended in any better way. So Iridium was my lifeline, and the ALE staff are the people who, who were the boots on the ground and able to save me. And to these folks, I owe Oh my life, really. I mean, I wouldn't be here without it. So ah, I have a lot more expedition ideas in mind, and I'm not done yet. Without hesitation, I will absolutely uh, choose Iridium. It'll be my first choice every time. Mm -hmm.